So what are access control lists? Now for the rest of this course, I'm just gonna call them ACLs. So an ACL is a way of specifying security for an individual object or for multiple objects. Now let's say, for instance, we've got an object. Now if you haven't set up any class level permissioning, by default, anybody in the public can then read and write to that object, that instance of a class that you've created. But what we can do is we can create something called an ACL. We can then associate with this ACL a set of users and we can say these users have read permissions. And also we can specify a set of users, another set of users, and say these users have write permissions. Now these users are associated directly with an ACL, not with the object, but with the ACL. And then what we say is that this ACL is then linked to this object. So then user one, user two, and user three can then see the object, that object will return when they perform a get, or if they do a find, that object would appear in the result set for those users. But only users three, four, and five can actually write to that object, can actually make changes to that object. Now you usually specify ACLs as soon as you create the object. So in your code, you create the object, you save it, you then add an ACL and you save it again really quickly. And that way it kind of adds a lot of security to the platform because no matter what, even if somebody has your app ID, even if they've got access to your app ID, they still then can't change that object because by the time that they're trying to run a query, the ACL has been set and they don't have read permissions. So ACLs are really the main method of adding security in PARS. So that's how ACLs work in their most basic form. Let's go through an actual example. So now on the screen, we've got some code, uh, which I've already bootstrapped, so just the same as before. We've got pars initialize and pars server URL. I'm then going through this example using a test our test object class. But I've got kind of some extra stuff here because I really want to start writing this code and I'm making sure I'm logged in as a user as I'm writing this code. So the first thing I'm going to do here is pars user.login. This was the uh, user account I created before. And then once that, that login is successful, I'm going to call the main function on line six. Okay, so once I'm logged in, so once I know I have a user object, I'm going to call the main function. Then if I expand that out, all I've got is some basic code in here, just to begin with, it's gonna log something out. It's gonna create a test object, set some data on it, and then save that test object to our pass server. So if I now run this code, there we go, main called, and then it's saved the test object and uh, printed out the ID of it. So now let's set up this test object with a basic ACL. So only the currently logged in user can read or write to that test object. Now, if you just wanna set both the read and write permissions to one user, to one user, you can do that very, very quickly with just a shortcut function. So I'm just gonna type that here. So you can just type test object, set ACL, new pars, ACL, and pass in the currently logged in user. So you can get the currently logged in user by calling pars.user.current. And that's it. Okay, so that's now setting up an ACL and access control list where there's one user who can read this currently logged in user and there's one user who can write the currently logged in user. So now if I clear this, so let me refresh the page. Now if I run main call, we're gonna look for this ID UPM. Let's go into the dashboard. Let's look for Oh, test object, UPM is the top one. So you can see the ACL prior, it was public read and write, so anybody could read or write this object. And now this ACL is set up, okay? The public can't read and write, and only this particular user can read, and he can write as well, so he can do both, but only this user can read and write that object. That's one way of specifying an ACL. It's pretty simple. 
it's quite rare that we just want to set it up so only one user, one specific user can read or write an object. You usually want to provide a list of users who can read and a list of users who can write. Let me at the top create var user is equal to current user. And let me clean, clean up the code for a second. Okay. Now the second way of setting an ACL lets us set the list of users who can who have write access and the list of users who have read access separately. So to do that, we actually need to save an ACL or we need to create an, a group ACL instance. So we create an ACL instance with the new keyword. And then we can specify who has write permission by calling group ACL set write access. And we can provide the user who has write access. So I'm specifying that the currently logged in user will have write access. Um, and the final parameter is a Boolean as to whether or not they have write access. So you can specify that the currently logged in user doesn't have access. Okay. I'm setting true. So I'm saying the currently logged in user, this user here, he has write access to this object. And as the same as write access, you can also specify the read access. Okay, and I'll do the same. I'll say the currently logged in user has the read access. And then again, you just set ACL. So you pass in the ACL that you've created, and then you just save the test object. Now, if there are multiple users, you just call this multiple times. So if there was user one, user two, user three, or if you're calling this through a loop, you can just specify multiple users. In this example, I've only got one user. So I'm just going to save that. So now if I refresh the page. So now if I run, the test object gets created. It's 50p. Let's look at the dashboard. Refresh. Um, where are we? 50p, 8, top one, look at the ACL. And it looks very, very similar to what we had previously because it's just, we've just set one user with read and write access. Um, if you have multiple users, this is the way you'd want to call it because then you can provide multiple, uh, then you can call this function multiple times and specify the write access for multiple users. But a more typical pattern to have is that if an object gets created, the owner is the currently logged in user. And in future, only this user will be able to save that object. But really, anybody is able to read the object. One example of this might be a blog post. So if a user creates a blog post, only they should have write access to that blog post. But anybody else, any other user on the system can have read access to that blog post. If we then had to loop through every single user and add them as read access, that would be very, very time consuming. So parse has another function that we can call. So we can specify set public read access true. And then we just set the ACL as before. So if I clear, hit run. So now we GKF. So now if I look in parse dashboard, refresh, here we go. So you can see GKF is the one we just created. If I click on the ACL, you can see the public have access to read this object, but only this user can write this object. So this is kind of a more typical pattern that you would use in parse. That's kind of the most common security code you'd write is the user who creates the object has write permissions, but everybody else really has read permissions.